Good morning, everybody, and welcome to ShilohRelics.com's YouTube channel. I am very thankful to get to be with you guys today. I'm sorry I didn't get one of these done last week, but uh, it's because you guys have been ordering and taking care of things and making things happen, and I certainly do appreciate each one of you. If you go on to ShilohRelics.com, got a lot of stuff for sale right now. Uh, and even if you don't buy, go on there, look around. You're going to learn something, hopefully. And that's one thing I always tell everybody when I get to do these videos, it gets that gives me the opportunity to share with you why I think something is needed, why I spent my money on it, because most everything you see on that site, I have um, either bought or went to the bank, borrowed money and bought, because uh, I wanted to own it and I wanted to get to offer it to you guys. And I just love getting to be around the stuff. Today, we are gonna talk about something that is uh, very collectible. It's easy to, you, you know me, if there's something that's a little bit different, I like it. And this, uh, uh, I'll just jump into it. The US Model 1839 belt buckle, like this, is the classic buckle you think of when you think of Civil War belt buckles. <clears throat> and I had a lady after one of the Antiques Roadshow episodes there and says, why do people collect those belt buckles? And I'm like, well, they're such a personal thing. Everybody uh, needed one and they liked that theirs were different and they liked the different decorations. And so they're very collectible. A lot of people collect them and they can bring some crazy money. Uh, the standard though one for the US Army during the Civil War is this. It's a US Model 1839. Now just the model doesn't mean when it was made. That's when they first put it in to government regulations. In 1839, this is what they had. And it's a simple US in the center, border around, very well made buckle. They will be uh, stamped brass on the front. They have uh, the brass hooks on the back like this, very well made brass hooks. You'll see them with the arrow style like this. You'll also see them with what they call stud hooks or puppy paw hooks. And it's the one that most of that three million man army from the north, that's what they were wearing. Uh, Cause it was the standard one and it was simple and they knew how to make them and they made them by the million. Uh, you can find those usually under $300, just the buckle itself these days. And when the war broke out, the Confederacy made several different buckles. They copied one that gets nicknamed the regulation. And that's because of this. When you look at them side by side, that it's intended to strictly copy that uh, US 1839 pattern, but they didn't have, most of the Southern uh, contractors and makers did not have the type of machinery to make a perfect buckle like that 1839. They did the best they could with what they had. So what did they have? These buckles, this one is the regulation style. And <clears throat> it's made out of a simple sheet of stamped brass. You take the brass, you have the die, you stamp it into it, it puts the CS letters, the, uh, and it puts a little border around the edge. Now there's one that looks very similar to this. It looks like this, that you see most of the time. And it's referred to as a rope border because around the edge, it has the little beaded pattern that looks like a rope but uh, it's much more common than the regulation. Uh, the regulation, which is this one, has a simple border around the inside of it, not the rope like the rope border buckle. Most of the ones of this buckle, uh, most excavated examples of this buckle have come from the uh, Western theater, meaning the Tennessee, the Mississippi over this way, instead of Virginia, North Carolina, uh, the Eastern theater as they're referred to. Uh, so what did they do? When you look on the back of the buckle, man, you can see that they were trying to do it, but they didn't have all of the materials that, that uh, they could just put into buckles. They had to use that lead for bullets. They had to use, uh, just make do with what they had. So what did they do? When you stamp that oval, you're only, if you're in a sheet, you're only getting the oval. You have all of this left over on the border. So what do you do with that? You can melt it back down, make another buckle, or you can take that brass, trim that brass out and make these hooks. They're handmade hooks. 
Uh, they'll always be different. You'll, there's two variations in Steve Mullinax's book. Uh, wish you were here, Steve. I thought about you the other day and I miss you, buddy. Uh, but in Steve Mullinax's books, he shows two variations. And one has thin hooks, one has thick hooks. It's just what they had, the amount that they had. And what did they do with them? They didn't pour lead all the way around those hooks. What they did was they took a little bit of solder and they soldered them onto the back of the buckle like this. And you can imagine, if you put a little bit of torque on there, that hook's gonna pop off. So most of these that you see are in excavated condition because they got lost, had to be replaced. Uh, and most of the time when you see them, they're missing one or more of those hooks because all that held them in place. Look at that solder. There just wasn't much there to hold that in place. So that pops off. Uh, this one has all three of the hooks. And this one, uh, in theory, is sold. Fellas, uh, gonna pick it up and buy it. But uh, I didn't, hadn't had one in a while and I wanted to do this video. Most of the time when you see one of these videos, it's because it's for sale on the site. But this one, I wanted to show you guys what it was. It's uh, Southern Perfection. <laughs> they did what they could with what they had and it made it 150 years. This one is in non-excavated condition, meaning that it just came out of a house, uh, out of the veteran's attic or closet. And those generally will bring a good bit more than the excavated version because there are a lot more excavated ones than there are non-excavated. Uh, but this one's, it's got to look, you can just picture it sitting there in that uh, dresser drawer for 150 years. Uh, but I hope you guys are well. Man, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this last couple of weeks has been hard. I've got several friends. Uh, one bad thing about being one of the young guys in the business is that eventually you get to a point where you're not the young guy. You're still the young guy in the business, but all of those people that got you going and got you started in the business uh, either aren't here or aren't in good health. And I've got a, a few friends right now that are that are battling some cancer and some other things. And uh, I could use y'all's help. It's been a hard last couple of weeks and I just could use some positivity going towards those friends. I ain't gonna mention them because they know who they are, uh, but I'm very thankful for them. They have helped me over the years when they didn't have to. And that's, that's the one thing that you can tell uh, about a quality person. They help you when they don't have to and when it's not gonna benefit them. And I've got several of them. Uh, one of them is having a PET scan today and uh, I could just use a little positivity. So if you'll keep a good thought for them, I'll keep a good thought for you. I hope you guys are well. I hope you remember to tell those people that you love that you love them because uh, it's very, very important. I tell everybody that I do love that I love them uh, and it doesn't matter with that. If the last words you hear out of my mouth are I love you, I'm okay with that. I love you guys and I'll catch you next time.